If you're wondering what case I'm using for my Samsung Galaxy S10, see the link in the description box down below. This is an official Samsung case and it's a fantastic case. So check the links below and now let's move on. All right, so the very first thing I'm gonna share with you guys is known as the screen flash option. So, so what I want you guys to do is go to the settings real quick and then scroll all the way down to accessibility, go inside and then go to advanced settings and tap on flash notification. Now I'm sure that you guys are aware of the camera flash notification. So when you do get a message or a phone call, the camera flash on the rear of the device actually flashes. You can enable that using this one. But something new that is over here is known as the screen flash option. So let me show you what this is. Basically, the entire screen is going to flash when you get a notification. Let me show you how that looks like. So let's uh, send myself, let's just go to the home, send myself a text message from another smartphone, and let's see what happens on the actual screen. So as you can see, the screen actually flashed, showing me that there was a notification incoming. Now if I were to turn off the phone, again, if I send myself a text message and it's sitting on the table, uh, maybe it's muted, that's exactly what's gonna happen, okay? So that's absolutely fantastic, that is the screen flash option. So the next tactic has to do with actually setting a video wallpaper on your home screen, and I'm not talking about a video wallpaper you download, I'm talking about a video wallpaper that you made yourself. So if I go to my gallery, I went to the park yesterday and did a recording of a park, uh, just a walk in the park. And what I can do is I can actually set this as a wallpaper on my home screen. So all you wanna do is you wanna tap on this button here, and then you wanna tap on set as wallpaper, and it's gonna allow you to actually preview that wallpaper uh, on your lock screen, exactly how it's gonna look like, and then, and then all you have to do is click edit here and trim the video to 15 seconds. So I have to click edit, and then as you can see, it allows me to trim that video to 15 seconds of that entire clip, so I can put it in the middle or whatever I wanted. So that's the area that I'm gonna use as my video wallpaper. I'm gonna click done, and then quickly, it's gonna save the video, and it's gonna give you a preview of what it's gonna look like on the actual lock screen. When you're ready to go, you click on set as wallpaper, and boom, you're done, all right? So when I go back home now, and if I go into my home screen, I'll see that video wallpaper, and I can tap on the screen to see the entire 15 uh, seconds, or I can just uh, log in with my fingerprint, all right? And here's another quick tip uh, that you're gonna love. So if you go to, so basically you just launch your camera and you just grab the shutter button and put it anywhere that you want on the screen for easy access. When you're done doing this, you just put it back where it belongs, all right? Let's move on to the next tactic. If you're wondering what case I'm using for my Samsung Galaxy S10, see the link in the description box down below. This is an official Samsung case and it's a fantastic case. So check the links below and now let's move on. So the next tactic is something I've been waiting for a long time. I've been waiting for a precise copy and paste tool built into the keyboard. It's now here. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me just launch Chrome over here and let's just make sure the keyboard comes right up. So normally when you have to copy and paste something, so for example, let's say I wanna copy and paste a portion of this uh, over here, it's very hard to do. So I cannot just easily copy just Google uh, right here. So I would have to press and hold. Sometimes it selects the whole thing. Then I have to do something like this. And sometimes it just takes too much time and it's not precise, all right? So what they have added to the actual option, uh, keyboard option, is a tool. So what you wanna do is based on how your keyboard is set up, you can, uh, if you're seeing suggested words right over here, then you can tap on this button here and that's gonna bring up the menu. If you tap this button one more time, it just gives you suggested words. So we're gonna tap this one, it's gonna convert into the settings and then you can tap this to expand the options and on the side, you have the text editing option. So with the text editing option, you're gonna tap on it and you get this nice little joystick to precisely control what you can copy, cut, select, and paste. So let's say I just wanted to uh, copy a little portion of this uh, www.google.com. Let's just say I wanna copy and paste G-L-E, or just G-L, okay? You know how hard it is to actually narrow down to that area just using your fingers. So what you can do here is, you can first move the cursor using this uh, joystick to where you want it, then you can tap on select, and then you can go twice over here, and now I have GL copied, no problem, okay? Then I can copy that, and then I can you know, erase this and just tap on paste, and boom, we've got GL right there. This is an absolutely fantastic feature. And of course, it's got everything over here, so just to give an example, if I were to go to uh, 
again, let's just go to Google. Let's bring up the keyboard. Uh, let's say that this was a big paragraph here and I wanted to just uh, select the whole thing. I just tap this over here. I tap on this button, go to text editing, and then I can just select all and just erase it. Okay, so you have the full functionality built into it. Just play with it and learn how to use it. Now, I do want to show you one more thing. If you're wondering what case I'm using for my Samsung Galaxy S10, see the link in the description box down below. This is an official Samsung case and it's a fantastic case. So check the links below and now let's move on. And that has to do with the keyboard. Now you notice I'm pressing this button to reverse uh, from suggested to the actual menu. And as you can see, we have the settings option right here. I can tap on this, it'll take me into the keyboard setting option. Inside keyboards, I can modify the keyboard to the way I like it to work for me. So I can tap on keyboard layout and feedback. And what I can do is make sure that key bar, uh, keyboard toolbar is enabled. So if I disable this, all right, and just click OK for a minute, I'm going to show you guys, if you do go in here, you're not going to see those options here. So you would have to tap here. You're not going to see any one of these options right over here. So that thing over here has disappeared. So if you were not able to see that thing, then you do want to go back into the settings where I just went and actually enable that option. But if you don't have that, you can still press and hold over here on this area, and that is going to expand to give you that option as well. Okay, so you can go to the settings here. I just like to, uh, I just happen to like it uh, on the top as a keyboard toolbar because it is easier to actually access. The other thing over here, which is also a very ni nice feature, if you tap on keyboard themes, you can pick from a dark or a light theme. All right. You can also do things like, um, let me just go back here. Where did it go? Right here. You can do adaptive theme, which I don't like. Uh, that, that's just going to adapt the keyboard to whatever background that you have at a given app. Now, with this one here, you can pick the light or the dark version. And, of course, you can enable or disable uh, the actual uh, key border. So, you get a preview right here. Okay, so that's the preview for the light. And that's the black. And this one is without borders. I can click Apply. And if I do want to add borders, which I like to have, you can have it uh, this way. Now you got uh, borders, the keys are more clearly defined, but some people don't like that, so you can disable that and have the other version. And while we are here, might as well just show you this too. So if you do a high contrast keyboard, uh, you'll notice that you'll be able to pick all kinds of different colors. You can customize your keyboard as you please, okay? So that's great as well. Now this is only good if you want a high contrast keyboard. I like the other ones better, so I'm going to disable this. This is uh, much better right over here. And finally, you can tap over here. You can change the size of the keyboard. If you want a bigger keyboard, maybe you have bigger fingers, you can change the size or you can reduce the size. So it takes less screen real estate and you get to see more on the top. All right. And of course, you have other options here as well. Now you can have the number of keys disabled. So that's going to make the keyboard even smaller. Uh, then you can access them from here, obviously. But if you like the number of keys like I do, you can just tap that. You have it right there. All right. So that's the keyboard tactics that I absolutely love. Now, one new option that we have on the Samsung Galaxy S10s with the One UI is something known as the lockdown mode. So if I press and hold on the power button here, you get three options. I'm going to have you add one more option to that three options. You get the, uh, let me just show you real quick. You got the power off, restart, and emergency mode. What you can do is if you go to the settings, and if you go into the lock screen, and if you go to secure lock settings, you tap on this one. Let me just put my password in. Nothing special here. Uh, you can enable the show lockdown option. So if you enable this, you're going to get this option. You can tap it, and it's going to lock the phone. But to unlock the phone, you cannot use your fingerprints or any other method. The only fingerprint you can use is your PIN number. So that's great. Maybe you're going to sleep, and you don't want somebody trying to use your finger uh, to actually unlock your phone while you're sleeping. That's possible. So that's why you have a lockdown mode. Uh, so nobody, nobody can access your phone unless they simply know the actual PIN number. So now, if I press and hold on the power, you're going to see the lockdown mode. If I tap on it, it's going to lock the phone, all right? But as you can see, there's no biometrics here. You have to swipe to unlock. You have to put your password in. So that's a great little security feature. If you want to make sure that nobody uses your finger to unlock your smartphone, maybe when you're asleep or taking a nap, these things happen, but now you can secure that as well. Let's move on and talk about the next secret feature. So normally when you actually uh, press the recents button, and if you tap this button over here, 
You do not see this option here that says pin this app. Try it on your phone right now. You're not going to see pin this app. I'm going to make sure that you guys disable that option just in case you have it. So let's go to the settings. Let's scroll down over here and go into the biometrics and security. Go all the way down, tap on other security settings. And at the bottom, you've got pin windows. So make sure this one is enabled. Let me show you what it does. So basically, if you have your phone and you want to give your phone to a friend, let's say you just want him to see or her to see a specific app and nothing else. What you can do is you can give him, let's say, Chrome application, tap on this button, go to Chrome, tap that button, and pin that app. All right, so that app is now pinned. The person cannot exit that app. They can only stay uh, in this app and nothing else. Now, if you want to exit the app, you have to press and hold on these two buttons, and that's going to take you look right here, the recents and the home, and that's going to take you to the lock screen from which you have to actually log in to exit the application. So this way, if you give somebody your gallery, uh, your browser, or just showing you showing them something specific, they cannot exit that app and start toying with the rest of your phone. So quickly with that uh, option, I'm going to just clarify something. If you go to the uh, biometrics and security, uh, you can go into the other security settings, and it's right here. Uh, when you do enable it, you can require for the pin not to be asked. So if I do this, all right, and if I pin the window now, let's pin this app, you still cannot exit this, okay? But if you press and hold on these buttons, it is going to unpin the app without you having to put your password in. So that's the app pinning feature you can apply. The next thing I want to talk to you about has to do with the phone. If you go into your phone, and if you tap on this setting and go to settings, there's an option here that says show calls in pop-up. So let me disable this, which is a default on how you get all your phones. Let me call myself uh, from my other smartphone real quick. So let me dial myself and you'll see that the regular pop-up is going to pop up and it's going to just ring the phone. And let's, let me just accept this call. And as you can see, this is a full screen view. Uh, the phone takes over the other app. So let me show you how to fix that uh, so the phone does not take over the app. So let me just decline this call, uh, go into my actual phone, go into the settings, and enable show calls in pop-up. So this way, what's going to happen is I'm going to call myself right now, you'll see. Now when I accept the answer over here, as you can see, the window stays here so it can still work with this application at the bottom. So the, 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 the active call stays in pop-up form so I can still see what's going on in my existing app. Uh, sometimes when you get a full, full phone call and you put it on like speaker or something, which I can from here, uh, it just fills the screen and takes away from whatever you were doing. Maybe you just want to talk to somebody, say quickly goodbye, and go right back to what you were doing. So for that, make sure show calls and pop-up is enabled. So when you are in another app, the phone application doesn't take over the screen when you accept that call. So let's click end on this one. And real quick, I'm going to show you one more thing. So if you have, if you go over here to answering and ending calls, what you can do is you can assign the press volume up key to answer a call or press power key to end the call. So now you have physical keys to take or reject calls instead of swiping on the phone. All right. That's much more practical and useful. All right. Let's move on. And one more thing I want to talk about has to do with the smart select option. Now, this option is in the edge screen. So let me just bring that up. It's uh, right over here. Uh, this option normally is reserved for the Note series of Samsung smartphones. So on the Samsung Note 9, Note 8. So you can use these with S Pen. But now they actually added this option here so you can access it for the other smartphones as well. So what you can do with this Smart Select is just select parts of the screen and save it as a screenshot. All right. So that's saved. But if I go back here, I can do it this way too. So that's the circle. Make it small or big. Any portion of the screen on any app, anywhere that you want. And then you have the uh, animation mode. And of, of course, you have the pin to screen mode. So if you tap on animation, and if there was a video playing in the background on YouTube, you can record that video and turn it into a GIF animation, which is going to be saved and can be reused over and over. So you can create your own GIFs using these, this option. Now, this option, you have to go to the settings and then enable it in the edge panels. It's called the Smart Select option. Should be in here, but if it's not here, 
go to the store, Galaxy Store, and just search for Smart Select, and then download it by tapping that button, and it's going to show up right where I was at, right here. And just enable it, and now you have this powerful little screenshot and GIF maker utility. All right, that was the last tactic for you guys today. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.